Yeah, welcome back. The embattled former Deputy Senate President Ike Kwaramadu told Justice Inyanekwo of a federal high court in Abuja on Thursday that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission was responsible for his travails at the London court where he had been in detention over alleged organ harvest since from June. The ex-deputy Senate President in an application by his counsel Chief Adeboega or Womolo claimed that the forfeiture order was granted to the federal government in error because the EFCC suppressed information and facts in respect of the properties. Specifically, the senator who has been detained since June 21, 2022, alleged that the EFCC fraudulently obtained the forfeiture order for the government by concealing information that the investigation on the 40 properties started as far back as 2008. The Kweramadu therefore prayed to the court to set aside the forfeiture order and stay proceedings in the matter until he resolves his ordeal before the London court. However, counsel to the EFCC, Silvanus Tahir, denied that the commission was behind Kweramadu's ordeal, while admitting that the EFCC wrote to the London court based on a special request he said that it was a normal routine for anti-graft agencies to exchange information that would be helpful to one another. Well, joining us to discuss this is Olado Tun Hassan, a legal practitioner, and Charles Otu, a political analyst. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Well, it's a pleasure to be on your program. Thank you for having me. Good. Let's begin with you, Dotun. Ekwermadu is in a faraway land. It sounds like a fairy tale, far, far away, in the United Kingdom. And here we are in Nigeria doing what we're doing uh, to him in absentia. He is made to face the law here and is requesting for more time so that he can resolve that issue there in London and come back to the country. Now, this case of Ekwermadu, is it such a case that it can be done in absentia? Because maybe some cases are very, very serious that you don't even need the individual to be there and he can be convicted in absentia and all that. What are the kind of cases? Does this one also fall under those kind of cases that, can be, um, that the person can be prosecuted while he's absent? Well, uh, well let me first of all uh, lay the record straight uh, well, in as much as uh, the London case is strictly on harvest, uh, on human um, part harvest, that is the ongoing case in London, and the separate case is pending, that is was pending before uh, its uh, arraignment in London and all these other issues that came about has been there. So, and the order that the EFCC sorted was on the forfeiture order of proceed of crime. They believe the the houses and every property that was and was at the proceed and it can be obtained uh, via a court order just in order not to dissipate those properties or sell it off the court needs to protect those uh, properties that they suspected to be proceed of crime is protected under the ESCC act uh, to apply in that regard for the protection of such property there for future order as well as the ongoing cases. So in as much as um, the, the, the ways and manner, the introduction of the London case to this uh, matter, to me, I just see it as most ridiculous uh, for anybody to equate uh, EFCC to be behind the London case. The London case, uh, you know, it's not Nigeria that anybody can sweep anything under the carpet. As simple as we may think, the matter is, is a severe offense in that place. So it breached the laws of the of the UK. So and you cannot expect ESCC to now be the the, the wind chunter. You know, these are issues we are so um, um, overwhelmed in this part of the world that uh, we try to equate everything to be political. Even when you commit some um, yes, uh, um, corruption uh, case uh, uh, offenses, you still perceive um, all your predicament must be weighed on on a particular excuse. So I don't think the, the, the claim or the headline, uh, I, I believe the lawyer should withdraw that. And uh, I think he has, uh, uh, is well learned as well. He shouldn't um, put up the London case to equate to the ESCC case. In as much as the, the, 
the the matter is still subsisting before the court. I only want to prejudice the the outcome of the application by his own lawyer. But we should correct the record that corruption cases, as far as it's concerned, they can we can they can grant anything in absentia as far as it is bordering on allegation that revolves around corruption related issues. And nobody should see SCC as a as a uh, um winch hunting. If you don't commit crime, you don't you you will not be pursued in the manner the EFCC is going. And this should serve as a deterrent to all our political uh, uh, leaders that they shouldn't take us for granted. You can see how much of billions is being recovered from the uh, accountant general of the federation, and that is the person in charge of our budget, our spending, our live wire. So if these people just take us for granted and are the heels of a um, um, uh, 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 pinch from the EFCC, they start crying foul. What of if the if the money that they 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 embezzled and used to acquire over fifty um, houses across the world within Abuja and everywhere? Those are the monuments for the road construction that people died every day in the far east west road. Those are the money that was meant to 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 build agriculture, build the youth of the eastern part of where it's from. So, but the fact that we've been embellished in the act of corruption, nobody is trying to call anybody to order. They believe it should be a culture. And I think this EFCC is on the right path. And they should go after all other person of such similar uh, um, uh, criminality tendencies. So we cannot continue to, 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 to reject failure. I would think we are managing a state as a country. We need to have our democracy working. We need to be all, all standing, and we need to support the ESCC to achieve its uh, uh, constitutional task. Thank you. Okay, um, if we have time, we'll revisit that. You've talked about the fact that uh, EFCC is doing its job and all that. Uh, but let me first of all just hear what Charles has to say about this before we revisit um, the EFCC and the kind of functions and the accusation uh, of uh, Ekwere Madu that... Uh, the EFCC may be complicit or something. Uh, Charles, what do you think about this whole thing? Uh, thank you very much. Mr. Wangu, the, the, uh, what Mr. Dorto has deposited is uh, uh, as a lawyer, is very correct. The, the law should always take its full course. And um, that is what Nigerians have clamored for. Uh, just to differ in a way to say that in the case of the argument by Primado's lawyer, when I read uh, uh, the lawyer, the SAL, the, if you can read in between the lines, it appears to him that it is a case of the wish cried in the night and the baby is dying in the morning. Now, he cited that Primado's, uh, the EFCC is claiming that this investigation started around 2008. And since 2008 to this is 2022, that is a period well over um, 12 years. So that for 12 years you were investigating this man, you were concealing information. If you read the lawyer very properly, his argument is hinged on the fact that information was being concealed by the commission mm. from even Ekweremadu himself. And uh, in that case, just like in the London court where Ekweremadu is being tried, uh, non in the Nigerian legal system still operates in such a way and manner that one is subsumed innocent until he is proven guilty. That is the import of the laws of our government, the constitution, and our laws as it were. But if, if you look at it, why we, why we would want essentially the EFCC or the court to get a premado indicted, you, uh, you know, convincingly, in a way that the facts will be laid and the public will be convinced. Uh, the lawyer may appear to be uh, currying the sympathy of the public, but if you look at his argument too, there are some sense in it. The question would be, since 2008, when the EFCC started investigating the premado, have the commission been communicating the public on this, or is it a case of oh, Bob, the, the child, uh, Bob, the 
Bob, someone said, because it's absent. These are the questions that should arise from the disposition of a mother's lawyer. And uh, we shouldn't just um, maybe think that the lawyer is crying because, um, uh, because he wants to protect whatever interest he may have as someone who is handling the matter. So I, I would like a scenario where the commission comes out clearly to say, yes, in response, instead of uh, protesting or demonstrating as they are alleged to be doing, the EFCC should come out to say, yes, since 2008 we started this investigation 12 years ago, these are the facts we've laid before the table of the, of the accused. These are the ways we've communicated the facts before seizing or you know, uh, 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 going to court to ask for the future of those 40 houses. It is ridiculous, really, that we have a, brand of, a, a, a band of politicians who do not loot for their children alone. They loot for even the people. You know, they just loot in a way that, you know, how can somebody have 10 houses in Abuja, for instance? I mean, it's ridiculous, it's crazy. And uh, anybody who hears the number of properties, numbering about 40, as the FCC have said, it should worry us that these are public office holders. It should worry us that these are people that have been presiding over our budgets in the last couple of years that the Kremato has been seen as the deputy senior president of uh, the Nigerian uh, Senate. So why all this is in place? My own concern is that the EFCC should come out claim to say, look, we didn't conceal any information. This is how we've communicated our investigations in 2008. Because you cannot be investigating someone, for instance, in 2008. No information is before the public. No information is before anybody. So the public is just getting to know all of this. So they I might feel that EFCC is taking advantage of the absence of a good model to ask for those properties to not only be forfeited, but to be uh, uh, taken over by the federal government. That is my disposition. Okay, uh, well, let me come back to Hassan now. Um, based on the strength of the argument of uh, Charles uh, uh, just now, um, there are a lot of things in this, in this case. Now, what if Ekwere Madu really does have some evidence uh, in his favor, but he's not around. And people are also very suspicious of the fact that in the Nigerian uh, uh, justice system that a lot of things take so many years. Suddenly, between June and uh, December, where Ekwere Madu has been in London, his case is very fast. He's not here. And then also you talked about EFCC being the ones that will teach these politicians a lesson by showing or by using some of these people as examples. Yes, it's a very good thing. But we also know that EFCC chairman, the immediate past EFCC chairman, is in, the, in custody because he himself was corrupt. So is it not possible that maybe Ekwere Madu should have been given the benefit of doubt to come defend himself? Why the haste? Why they, even though the case has been there from 2008, why is it now at this point, are the people who are suspicious not justifiable in their suspicion? Well, uh, you know, we don't need to overcry on the issue that uh, borders on law, on uh, procedural um, interest that is before the court. Well, there are investigation. Investigation can take a number of years, that doesn't mean uh, it's belated to have been um, summoned to the court for the fact that he's facing one crime and one challenge or the other, then we should forgo the order. What I'm trying to say here is that we shouldn't be over-sensationalizing issues. In this part of the world, we are too much over-crying on issues that come to the media, cases of popular politicians, mm. while we forgo the fact that this practice of corruption, of um, believing corruption should be promoted, we need to really think twice as a nation. We cannot continue as a nation to see things from different prisons. People may see it from the prism of ethnic bigotry. Some people may see it from the political point of view that, yes, yeah, because the Kurumadu is running and some of his enemies are behind him, trying to pull him down. Please. We should learn to think outside the box. Mm. So the fact that there is an allegation, we don't, yes, it, 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 it needs to be proven beyond reasonable doubt that he's guilty. Mm. But most of these things that we have been pursued now, 
are the property. It still has right of appeal. But for the fact that we know that if a case is already ongoing against a politician, all they do early enough is to withdraw their monies, withdraw their sell the properties that can be can be that they may not even disclose. You know, these are one of the, the, the ailments that we are over all in about. Where is the morality? When you are coming in, you say, okay, you are declaring your property, you are declaring your assets. At the end of the day, when you are leaving office, you go home with undeclared assets that were never the part of what you, you were known for. How and when do you start acquiring those? What would have been the source of your income? How do you really get to acquire those things if there are no symptoms of corruption? So for me, I'm not trying to say that, oh, we are putting the cart before the, 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 yeah. uh, the, the horse. But let us begin to take cognitive interest as citizens. Let's begin to make noise. But the fact that the query matter today, any other person can be tomorrow. It doesn't mean that well, if it is this person now, that we should begin to do because it's ethnic. No. Let anybody that is found one thing, let there be a proper procedural investigation. Yeah. In as much as these are investigations that the ESCC finds so worthy, they've only brought an application for the forfeiture of assets. Okay, so, so, so Equiremado still has a chance. Interim, it, might, it might be interim before the final forfeiture can be gotten. That might be after the, 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 the judgment of that matter. But because of the protection of those properties, ESCC needs to do the needful, and they are protected under the law to do that. Okay. So in as much as the lawyer might be putting out an issue that well, there are a lot of um, issues that were never disclosed, that were shielded away from the, um, from the purview of the public, let the query Madu himself, through the lawyer, let them tell us what are those issues that were never put before the public. Mm. If they are hidden facts that we all need to know, let them put it, if they are hidden facts of uh, complicity from the ESCC officials, let us know, so that we know our common enemies as citizens. People should not begin to take us for granted. Mm. We don't hate Ikwere Madu as Mr. Ikwere Madu, but whatever things that we demean us as citizens, ESCC should go after every corrupt politician, everyone that is found wanting, and we'll continue to raise our voices. We know it's not easy, because in the same corridors of power, there are a lot of angels of corruption flying and hunting every night and day. And I pray that Nigeria will survive all of them. That is just my prayer. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, gentlemen, this is where we're going to wrap up. It's a, t a term for political Olympic, as I like to call it. Every four years it comes, and then we hear a lot of things, some of them unbelievable things. But like you have said, Hassan, um, everybody has to sit up and let our voices heard, especially when it comes to fighting for our common good. And Charles Otu also, you have said something really very reasonable. Uh, let everybody be given a chance to defend themselves and all that. But here we are, it is our Nigeria, and we hope that we can make it as good as we want it to be. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming on the program tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So this is where we wrap it up on uh, Plus Politics. But before we go, we are going to leave you with the highlights of the week. And as you enjoy that, my name is Nyamgul Agadji. Let's do it again on Monday. Bye for now. have a brand new law, the Electoral Act. We're going to try it for the first time, the amendments that demands biometric authentication before that counsels the need for incident fraud, that also counsels the need for the collection center, which is the center where the region of commerce. So we're changing our country. Let us see how it will go. We are quite optimistic that this will help. And that's why you see the youth are much more optimistic about the politics that those who believe in transactional politics are the ones who are thinking of the old order. So I think I'm very optimistic about next year. Mm. And I want all Nigerians to be optimistic. Okay. And to see the letter as something similar to the Civil Rights Act. Mm. I want Nigerians to be hopeful again that a better Nigeria is possible. The people should be the paramount interest, not about you ensure that look the incoming governor will not will not understand what is happening and will not be able to achieve his results in this regard this what i see here is politics 
people don't want any other uh, successful government, uh, the, the, the government that is sourcing them, especially when they are not in the same part from the same party, to succeed so that they will have opportunity to also say we want to come back or, or some other thing. So you need to you need to say, look, we are all working for the state. We are all at our work, whether I am from the PDP or I'm from the APC, what we are fighting for is in the interest of the state. So whatever that will benefit the state should be in our interest, should be at the paramount in our in our mind and not politics. And what I see here is politics. So we can get results by way of asking, asking uh, more questions from the outgoing uh, uh, government. They need to come and answer uh, some, uh, some questions. They need to answer, they need to dig into it and say, look, who are those collecting this money? Are there money being paid? Are there no money being paid? If, if money are not being paid, then you have to move to the federal government and say, look, why are these people not paying when they have licenses from you? Okay. Or what is happening? Or are they being given to, to, to operate freely? Or, or, or what, is the, what, is the, what is the issue? The lack of political will from the politicians themselves. Unfortunately, in this um, dispensation, not just the Muhammad Buhari led administration, since the turn of democracy, we, we have not really fared well in the way our politics is being played. We, we've been playing the politics of do and die, do or die. Our politics has not been smooth at all. And somehow, I think it's just this part of the world. We now tell everybody politics is a dirty game, so stay out of it. If you are clean, stay out of it. And so almost it's like a home of, of, of criminals. So as it were, it's, it's almost like it's left to, for um, terrible personalities to get into the space and do their bid and somehow even though that should not be the case somehow that's what we are seeing and so people come in there they steal votes they 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 pay thugs to create mayhem and even though the, their leaders say nothing about this or even when they say it, it just ends like the the holy book will say it's just lip service we pay lip service to all of these and then the the security agencies seem to have been compromised they seem not to be doing anything tangible about it. How many politicians have been, have been uh, you know, prosecuted for electoral violence across the country since the turn of democracy till now? Lives have been lost and lives continue to be lost and nothing seems to be happening. So we need more agencies to come out and, you know, talk about this. Our people need to know that we cannot become cannon folders in the hands of these daredevil some of these daredevil politicians not all of them but we know that somehow it's almost like no matter how good your intentions are the moment you step into the arena called politics you probably begin to sing a different song it's almost as though you 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 drink uh, like we always say table manners you begin to eat with criminals and so you're not supposed to speak while you are eating while you have the food in your mouth until you leave the space but that should not be the case that should not be the case we must have to begin to enlighten ourselves voter education citizens participation we must begin to hold ourselves accountable